past fatal heart impact, past painful starts. In fact, I blast tasteful thoughts and past. I back up my actions, fact, don't mask, grab reactions, jack, attack with every word, then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so for excuse. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember, you're discreet now. Get ready for Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here, and now, whenever we last left off, Midori is beginning to discover more and more of his powers. Now, with that being said, the entire list of powers Midori has to unlock is absolutely fucking ridiculous. If you guys do want to know how ridiculous, I will give you the name of one of the powers here that he does have. Let me just put it this way. He's immortal, and he has the ability to, to manipulate molecules. Meaning if he wanted to, he can set off a nuclear explosion in his hand. Yeah. It's crazy. Because I think if anyone has seen some of the crazy shit the Sentry has done, Midori can basically do all that. Including the time he went crazy and ripped off his own skin. And skeleton. It was nothing more than a brain with eyes. That was a weird-ass comic book. Anyways. Now. With that being said. Let's begin. We will pick up with Azuka Midoriya. He has gone to the X-Men School for Gifted Children in Japan. His parents didn't let him get a room at the school yet because they still do, they still do believe he is not ready to be there all the time, 24-7. However, they decided to ease him into it, slowly. And we do actually have a year later. Midoriya, he understands a bit more about his powers. And he's begun to know more about them. Now, Midoriya has discovered he has incredible strength, incredible speed. And he's discovered more abilities to his shadow manipulation. Or his ability to control the darkness. Now, I also do want to say he's discovered his intangibility, shape shifting, and the infinite tendril technique. Basically, a version of what you guys do see in the picture. Now, along with this, he has begun to discover or at least show signs of empath, cyberpath, and technopath or telepath. Along with, I want to say his atmokinesis. Yes, this is all crazy. Now, basically, atmokinesis is the ability to control the weather. Empath is imparting your emotions on somebody. Cyberpath is basically control over technology. And telepath is like Charles Xavier's version of tele the telepathy. Now, he's beginning to learn about these abilities. However, he does know the infinite tendril at this point and his intangibility by turning his body into pure darkness and moving in between molecules. Now, he has not discovered the full power of his molecule manipulation yet. However, he does find out whenever he does turn his body into darkness, he can just move through objects, subconsciously using this ability. Now, we do actually have today with Midoriya. Him getting up, and quickly at super speed, changing into his outfit. Before he actually does walk out of his door. And he just simply just dives over the staircase, getting into flight, and simply just beginning to fly around the area. Now, one of the teachers do actually tell Midoriya that he does not need to fly inside. And Midori does tell them that if they've ever flown before, they would realize that it's a lot more fun than they think. 
as we do actually have Rogue. Let's say... Actually, I don't believe I gave a age for Rogue, because she's one of the younger X-Men. Yeah. Rogue, I want to say, is at least around Midoriya's age. Or at least probably two or three years older than him. As she does actually go and stating that flying is actually a bit more fun than they all do think. And that Midoriya, he's got the right idea. Eventually, everyone does eat breakfast and head off to different classes. As we have first period, second period, and many other different classes Midori just go through. Along with the day, or today, where in his physical education class, or the class you use to train your abilities, we have Kitty Pride. While everyone is training and sparring against some other people, Midoriya, he does actually spar against Wolverine. And Kitty, she's going off against, let's say, Storm. Now, during their fight, Kitty does pass out. Her getting really dizzy and her head getting really lightheaded. Before she does simply just fall and pass out on the mat. Midoriya, fighting against Wolverine, he took his attention away from him for a second looking over to see if his friend Kitty was okay. Wolverine clocking him solidly in the side of the face. And Midoriya, he barely even moved backwards from that, trying to look back at Wolverine as he does actually grab him by his hand. And go to simply just twist his arm. Wolverine being quite surprised and telling the kid that he was supposed to stay at about 2%, or less than 50. Let's just say. In Midoriya, he is saying that he is less than 50. As he clocks Wolverine in the face. Now. Along with that, more and more things do begin happening. And eventually, after the day is over, we do actually have Midoriya. Who, after changing out of his clothes and taking a shower, is in his regular house clothing. Him walking around and actually going over to the infirmary. Asking Beast if Kitty is going to be okay. And he does actually respond that she does seem that she might be fine. He doesn't know if she had low blood sugar or possibly even skipped breakfast. She was there this morning, wasn't she? Hmm? Oh, uh, yeah, she was. Hmm. Do you know what she ate? Hmm... No, I don't think so. I think she just had pancakes. I see. So her blood sugar's not low. Was it fatigue, lack of sleep? Hmm. I'd have to conduct more research on... As soon as he does actually say that, Katie does actually somewhat jump up. Confused at where she is. As her eyes light up whenever she does see Midoriya. Immediately jumping forwards and basically tackling him to the ground. And Midoriya was caught off guard. As she basically just says, thank you, thank you, thank you. And is telling Midoriya that she has not forgotten everything he has done for her. Midoriya confused as she actually does give him a kiss. This catching Midoriya heavily off guard. And using his super speed, he immediately just backs away. And Kitty, she actually does somewhat jump back too stating that she kind of forgets he can do that. But anyways, I'm sorry. It's just so good to see you again. Especially after that day. Uh, Kitty, what was that? I, I mean, well, um, what's going on? After what day? Oh, sorry. I'm just... Her beginning to cry, saying that she's so happy to see him again. Especially after Midoriya shocked by the next word she does say. He died. Now, Midoriya asks what she does mean. He's right here. And Beast himself is kind of confused. Kitty does not sound like she's in her right mind. So, she must be suffering from delusions. Kitty, young lady, get back in the bed. 
I do believe I should go get Charles and find out what's wrong with you. Oh, please. Please go get him. This is very important. We don't have much time. Much time? Yeah, sorry. I just got so excited. Everyone I love and care for is here. Hmm? Okay. You two stay right here. Midoriya, can you look after her? Make sure she doesn't leave the room? Um, sh sure, Doctor Beast. <sighs> Alright, thank you. I'm going to walk out of the room. And as soon as he does, there's that awkward silence. Midoriya is trying to piece this all together. Kitty basically jumping back on him and wrapping him up into a hug. And Midoriya, he just tenses up. Not even sure what the hell is happening. As she does just hang on to him for a solid minute. Before Midoriya finally does at least speak up. Uh, um... Her looking up at him. And he does actually try and think about what to say. Crap. Crap, 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 crap. Uh, K Kitty... Could you tell me what's going on? You're acting very weird. Her backing away. And remembering the exact reason why she is actually here. Seeing that she is very sorry. Medoya asked her a few questions. She said that whenever he died, what does she mean? And she actually does begin her explanation. And I'll explain what she does say before Charles does enter the room. And basically fill in the gaps. So I won't have to explain it twice or confuse myself. She basically explains that she is from the future. And with the help of other mutants, they are currently trying to save their own future. From nuclear annihilation. And she threw her own mind into her past self. And she actually does begin an explanation. Talking about how, and then there's the fact that Midoriya, he's here. He's still alive. She didn't even really think that she would see him. Now, this is quite weird. Her going on to explain her and Midoriya getting closer. Midoriya, he did have a crush at Kitty at this point. And he did find her to be quite cool and interesting. And then whenever he discovered his intangibility power, him and her got to be the best of friends, along with Kirk, Nightcrawler. Now, basically, Midoriya, he began to show leaps and strides in power. Meanwhile, Kitty and Kirk were left in the dust. Have Midoriya, he never forgot his friends. And they stayed together. Till the end of the line. And she does remember the day he died. They were at the Xavier School. And it was her saying 15 years ago. So they would have both been around the age of 27 or possibly even in their late to early, well, their early 30s to late 20s. Talking about how they were all having fun, and they've just gotten everything settled. However, they forgot to keep up with everything going on in the world. The Xavier School, it's been moved numerous times from what she's heard. And with it being in Japan, they were out of the loop. Whenever they came back to America, they were sent there without knowing about the anti-mutant president and his policies. The world soon began to turn against mutants. People with quirks saw them as threats, and they believed them to be the cause of singularity. The Inhumans, they also did begin to leave Earth around this time. They were safe from the Annihilation. Now, 
With that, eventually Kitty, she is cut off by the door opening. And Professor X, or Charles, he does actually begin to read her mind. Understanding the current scope of the situation. Now, with that, he actually does inform her that this is very, very grim knowledge. And that he will get all the needs they can to start working on this. He'll find Logan with Cerebro, and then they will get a team together. Now, Midoriya is still kind of confused. Turning back to her as she is at least sitting next to him. Asking her about how he died then. And she actually does begin talking. Telling him that Midoriya, with his amazing power, he was put up against an entire army of sentinels. Sentinels? What they built. They used them to try and hunt us down. Kill us. They have powers that can jam our mutations. And that's not even the worst part. I'm not even talking about legacy yet. L legacy? S sorry. Crap. I'm changing the timeline too much. Her to saying that, screw it. He might as well know. Talking about the legacy virus. Talking about how it will affect humans, mutants, inhumans, and people with quirks. It is far too deadly. Midoriya, he didn't succumb to it. A few of their friends did. Even Kirk died. Before continuing on her explanation, Midoriya, whenever he was fighting against Sentinels, throwing as much power as he could around, he took out enough. She doesn't know how many, but he was able to keep them off their backs. Before he himself was shot with something. And he did begin to fall out of the air. However, that didn't stop him. He just kept fighting. And she believes that it could have been the legacy virus. Talking about how Midoriya was then killed on the spot. Shot down by men with guns. And basically... He turned human. She doesn't know the full scope of the story. Everyone was running and screaming, and she was basically carried away by Colossus. Now, this actually does shock Midoriya. However, she just begins to cry, and pulls him into a hug, talking about how she's so sorry about that day, and that she really should not have let him go. She shouldn't have let him fight. Now, with that, she does actually somewhat wipe away her tears and try to compose herself before walking out of the room. Midoriya left there with a lot of confusion on his face about what has happened. So, apparently he's dead in the future. That's fucked up. And people hunt them down. That's inhuman. Hmm. Not something that we would do. Why do you... That doesn't make sense. Jesus. We're really getting a bit angry. And then there is his power. The void begins to feed on it a little bit and acknowledge it, the rage he does feel, and the complex range of emotions that he does have. And the void, he returns a bit of the favor, exchanging this meal for some power. Now, with that, Midori himself does actually stand up, and go to walk out of the room. Now, he does still find this all to be quite crazy. So, he's dead. Kirk's dead. Legacy virus? Hmm. Him going back to his own room. 
and trying to process this information for a little bit of time. And this is when he actually does at least pull out one of his notebooks. And he does actually mean to flip through it. It has the Xavier School logo. And the classic colors. Black and yellow. So, Midoriya just begins to flip through it. Finding an empty page. And writing down what Kitty said to him. Along with at least writing down that she also did kiss him. Which he found to be a bit weird. Him trying to think about it for a second. Before he does at least erase that part. And try to think. Him and, him and Kitty are together in the future. Ah, oh, this is strange. Oh well, it can't be helped. But then again. If I'm right, in those movies I saw with Kirk. Doesn't coming back in time change the future? Hmm. Okay. Oh, this is so confusing. Midoriya setting down his notebook. Before, he does actually go to fall backwards. Turning into pure darkness as he does actually face the ground. And fall through the roof of the first floor. Midoriya beginning to fly as he actually does just set himself down by his feet. And begin to at least look around. Asking the person sitting at the table... Exactly, where is Kitty and the others? Hmm? Oh, they're over in the war room. We have a war room? Uh, yeah. Anyways, they're over there. Oh, uh, thanks. I'm going to walk away. Now, as that does happen, we do have Kitty sitting down and explaining everything in front of everyone as Midori himself does actually walk in. And Kitty begins an explanation about what they need to do. And the next few words that she does actually mean to say do catch everyone by surprise. They have to stop the assassination of a world leader. And if this person does die by mutant hands, it's going to be proved to be quite disastrous. Now then, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and have an amazing night. I will catch you guys in the next part.